Welcome to Western Park East Shropshire. Now this is an absolutely stunning venue and it's one that I've visited before in my blog so it might look a bit familiar to one or two of you but on those occasions I've been here specifically for a week when I've been fishing out the boathouse swim but on this occasion what I want to focus on is short session fishing because we're now at the end of July and at this time of the year I tend to visit waters for just overnight sessions and for a few hours here and there and Western is somewhere over the last few weeks I've been popping down to just with a rod in hand trying to get the fish going on the top and also fishing for a few overnighters. So let's have a look at my approach to fishing overnighters and short sessions and also some of the blogs that I've put together over the last few weeks. I think the best way of describing Western is as an estate lake set right in the middle of nowhere because it's surrounded by open fields, there's loads of old trees on the bank, some of which date back hundreds of years and the actual fishing on the lake as well that also dates back hundreds of years because if you take a look at Kevin Cliver's history of carp fishing book there's actually a mention in there of some carp being caught in the early 1900s so it's probably one of the oldest lakes that's still actively carp fished now today the fishing is run by RH fisheries and it's roughly six to seven acres in size with an average depth of a couple of feet now the carp today range from anywhere like singles all the way through to almost 40 pounds and I wouldn't class it as an overly difficult water I wouldn't call it really easy either it's somewhere in between it's a good venue to come down to where you've always got a chance of catching something so that's the main reason why I've been coming down here for quite a few short sessions recently Five thirty in the morning, and it's been a really wet overnight because there's been some heavy rain in the area, which has uh, kept me awake all night. Some thunder and lightning, but uh, it's been a successful overnight, and I've caught some decent fish to close to thirty pounds. One of which I'll I'll show you in a minute because I've only just caught it. But um, let me just talk you through what's happened because I got down here yesterday at about six thirty, and if I'm honest, I wasn't going to fish. I mainly came down to just do some some filming, some link bits for me um, for my next blog, but there was an awful lot of fish down in the shallows, which is where I am now. I'm not in the end shallow swim, I'm in the uh, one just up from there, so I'm just going to turn the camera around and talk you through what's happened, because when I got here, there was an awful lot of fish just out in front of here. There was a nice strong wind blowing into this little arm, and about halfway across, there was a load of fish fizzing up off the bottom and rolling, so I decided to get the rods out, but um, the one thing that I didn't do is because I was only going to stay for the night is I kept the marker float inside the bivy because I know this particular swim I know there's a lot of green algae out there and there's very few clear areas at all so instead of following the norm you know the thing that everybody has to do you have to get the marker float out well I didn't do that and instead what I did is I just got some one and a half ounce leads on some wafter hook baits and cast at the showing fish and it's paid off for me There you go, there's the fish I caught a few moments ago and I'm sure you'll agree that's a cracking fish to catch on an overnighter. Now if one thing sums this little trip up is don't be too hasty to get the marker float out because I think if I'd have started casting that thing around I'd have spooked all the fish out of the swim. But anyway, let's get this one back and we'll take a look at some footage from a few weeks ago when I did a bit of surface fishing down here on one of the afternoons. One of the reasons I really love surface fishing is there is nothing as exciting as seeing the fish cruising along and then getting close to the hook bait. It's so exciting. But over the years, the one thing I've learned more than anything about surface fishing is you've got to be careful about when you put that hook bait out there. You need to get the confidence of the fish up by feeding the swim with free offerings on a regular basis. Keep it going little and often. And then when the fish start competing with one another, that's the time to put the hook bait out there and then to sit back and wait for all hell to break loose. It's such a fantastic form of fishing, it really is. And it's no wonder it's my favorite type of carping. 
And one thing I really do love doing is fishing off the top and this year I've not really had the opportunity because I've been fishing overseas or fishing on really difficult lakes where the fish don't come in close but here at Western Park they absolutely love the surface and I've been feeding the swim now for about half an hour or so and as you can see it's alive with fish and I've just climbed the tree and one or two of them are decent as well so I'm going to get the hook baited out and cast it out and see what happens just about the right time because they're really going for it. What an absolutely banging fish to catch off the top, and I'm not sure if you can see this, but this carp's got spawning tubercles on it, which is normal for this time of the year. And they're these really fine white dots that you can see on its scales. It gives it a real rough feel. And that's a classic sign of this being a male carp. But that's a banger, so let's have a look at it properly. What an absolute banging fish to catch off the top. I've only been here about an hour and uh, I thought most of the fish in front of me were small but this one is probably a mid-20, something like that. I'm not going to weigh him. What a cracker. Right, let's take a look at the rig that I'm using today on the surface and as always with me and rigs, there's nothing fancy about it whatsoever. You don't need to be Einstein to set it up. It's really simple. I've just got 15 pound avid outline straight the way through to a bolt machine and this is one of the original bolt machines and I've got a little swivel on the end of that and then for the hook link a lot of people do recommend using six foot and above hook links to keep the hook bait away from the um, controller float but for me a three foot link is absolutely fine and today I'm using the 10 pound avid zig line and then on the end it's just got a really small hook that's a size 10 hook and we've got a little DNA pop up on the end of that which looks just like the free offerings that we're using today it's a really simple setup and hopefully it's going to catch me a carp or two today my floater tub's either loaded with mixers or floater pellets. Today we've got a load of floater pellets in there. These are the SLK ones. I've also got a couple of controller floats, different sizes to get me out different distances. And I've got rig bits like hook links and uh, various different hooks. This is zig line, but I do use it for surface fishing as well. And I've got loads of different types of hook baits in there, including some imitation baits as well as some cork and some pop-ups. And my personal favorites at the moment are these ones because as you can see, they match these little pellets perfectly and that's what I'm using today and they're definitely working. Cool. Oh, good fish. Well this one just doesn't want to give up which is reminiscent of a lot of the better fish in here. They all fight really well, but the big ones really do hold the bottom. And uh, I've seen a 30 pound common kicking around and a 30 pound mirror, so let's hope it's one of them. But you never can tell, because some of these fish, even these little ones, they really do fight well. There's a lot of weed on that line as well, so could be that that's uh, dragging in. You never know with this place. So that weed goes over the eye of the fish because then when the fish gets a load of, that's a good fish that is, gets a load of weed over its, its head, it uh, sometimes it covers them up and calms them down. Come on, baby. 
That's a good common knife. Oh yes. Oh yes. Bang on. That is a good common. A really good common. I knew it was a decent fish when I looked into it. Check that out, yes. That's a good one. That's a good one. Happy with that one. Very happy. I'm sure you'll agree this is a absolutely cracking fish to catch off the top. As I said earlier, just popped down for a couple of hours and found some fish in the shallows and there was some big ones there. I climbed the tree and had a good look down and there's some big commons and some big mirrors. And I'm guessing this is one of the big commons. It's got to be close to 30. I've not got my scales with me, but it feels really heavy and uh, I think I recognise it as well, but what a beautiful carp. You can't beat a summer's evening behind the rods. I've had a busy day, I've uh, been on acting. Came away from there, ran eight miles, and then spent two or three hours surface fishing. And I've just been around to the far side to bait up, and there's loads of fish all over the place, going backwards and forwards in front of me. And there's been nobody in this swim now for nearly a week, so I'm pretty confident for tonight. And I'm set to get my head down, or lie down anyway, on the bed chair, and just take in the moment because. There is something mega, mega special about Western Park. And I can't explain it to you until you get down here and you see it because you don't care if you catch. You just love being here. And that's how I'm feeling at the moment. Just proper relaxed, proper chilled out. And carp fishing sometimes is about just chilling out. It doesn't matter if you catch. And I don't care if I catch, to be honest with you. If I wake up in the morning and nothing's happened, so what? I've had a lovely night, a lovely evening on definitely one of the best carp waters in the UK. This month's product plug is the new baiting tools from Avid, and there are five in the range, all colour coordinated on the handle so you know which is which. There are two different size gating needles, two barb needles, and a drill. They're all retractable, which is great for storage, and they're in shops now. If you want any further information, then visit avidcarp.com. How much bait and what type of bait do I bring with me for a short session like an overnighter? Well, the first to go in the bag is the ever faithful sweet corn, 33p from Morrison's, and it's the best instant carp bait that there is. But the only problem with it is that other species like it, which is why I carry boilies with me as well. My current favourite ball bait is the SLK by DNA Baits and this is a fantastic big fish bait. I've taken it to various different waters and caught some terrific fish including the wood common on this one so after the sweet corn this is the first one that I'll go for. I also carry a variety of other hook baits with me including the Milky Malts and the S7 and whenever I'm asked by somebody new to DNA which baits would I advise them to use I'd say if you're going to go for big fish go with the SLK and if you're going to go for bites then go for the S7. Obviously they're both capable of doing big fish and lots of bites on the right day but that's my experience with them so far. The key thing is to not overbait when you're fishing a short session. If you've no experience of the lake then small traps like singles or bags is the way forwards. Obviously if you know a bit about the place then of course you can put out as much as you feel comfortable with. I know Western Park quite well and I've done well here fishing over four or five kilos of bait at this time of the year. There's a lot of good fish in here that like boilies but I also know at the moment they're being a bit moody so there is no definitive answer. It's all about the day and what you're confronted with and take it from me you're not always going to get it right. I think only the people who've done overnighters on a regular basis can appreciate really how hard they are because if you're working and then driving to the lake, which in some cases might be an hour and a half drive away, setting up and finding your spots and then fishing in the night and maybe getting a couple of fish in the night and then going home, getting showered, getting restocked up, going back to work and repeating the process, 
then I take my hat off to you because I did it for 24 years when I worked at Carp Talk and I didn't fish weekends, I used to just fish during the week and some of the lakes that I used to fish were quite busy so if you're fishing a, a weekend for an overnighter then you know I doff my cap to you, I really do because uh, you deserve everything that you get because they are hard work and I think the people who've got unlimited time on the bank don't appreciate the effort that goes in, into doing an overnighter because um, it takes an awful lot to to get yourself prepped, especially if you're going to go fishing on a regular basis in the springtime, because when I was working at Carp Talk in the spring, it's the time when the carp are waking up and you need to be on top of the fish, and that's when I do 70-80% of my fishing, so during the week I'll be going most nights and trying to stay in tune with the fish, trying to keep everything stocked up, enough leads in the car, got enough bait in the car, got enough food, got enough water, you know, just little things like that can take time, especially when you're really eager to get to the lake, so you know it's hard work and it got to the stage where I was fishing one lake about 10 years ago called Nostal Priory where uh, it's a day only water, it was 50 miles away from where I lived and there's only 15 odd fish in the lake so it was hard work, it really was going there trying to find a carp, trying to set up on the fish and it got to the stage where I was carrying too much gear as you can appreciate so you know all carp anglers carry too much gear and I think I learned a massive lesson fishing that lake that when you're doing an overnighter you don't want to be taking all of the stuff that you just don't need you know there's no point in overloading the barrow or killing yourself to get round to a swim with stuff that you're just not going to use so when I was fishing at Nostal I was taking just enough water to get me a couple of cups of tea for the day taking just a couple of spare leads and really finding everything down and making sure that I'd only got the essentials with me and nowadays obviously I don't do many overnighters I, I'm doing them at the moment here at Western just fishing in between my sessions that I'm fishing on Acton and just coming down for a few short hours here and there but I'm still loading up the barrel with just enough gear to get me through the night as you'll see now when I take a look at what I'm carrying. That's me loaded up for the night then. Now some people will carry twice as much gear as this because it's down to how comfortable you need to be when you're on the bank for the night but for me I've got everything here. I've got a rucksack down there that's got all my essential items in. It's got my camera bag, it's got my uh, tackle box, it's got my stove etc. I've got my Benchmark X bed chair there, nice and comfortable for tonight. I've got a little chair, I've got the Ascent bivvy, I've got my pod, and I've got my food bag. And that's got everything in there for an evening meal tonight, my breakfast in the morning, it's even got my DVD player in there and a few essential items that's just going to make tonight nice and comfortable. Underneath it, I've got in the panniers underneath, I've got the, um, the water bottle, I've got some pillars, some clothing, and then on top I've got my rod bag. Now, in the rod bag I've just got three rods, my buzzer bars and my landing net. I'm not using a marker float in a spot tonight, there's no need to, there's fish in the swim and the last thing I want to be doing is casting out and um, too much and spooking the fish out of there. So yeah that's basically me loaded up for the night, all I've got to do now is push it round to the swim. It's the end of June now and we're at first light and I'm in the roadie swim, this is the first time I've fished this swim on Western and I must say I really like it, it's a nice looking swim and yesterday when I got down here there was actually quite a lot of nice fish knocking around to the right in the bay and I'd seen probably half a dozen or so really good fish up to sort of mid 30s I'd say I guess because there weren't many fish where I fished um, down towards the boat out swims last week there was a lot of fish in that area, a lot of small ones but here it definitely seems to be a better stamp of fish and at first light this morning a few moments ago been woken up by a really aggressive um, male, a really nice looking fish, really dark uh, coloured and put up a great fight and it weighed in at 29 pounds so I'll take a look at that one in a minute but yeah it's a nice swim to be in because um, I've gone around to the other side and despite there being quite a lot of anglers on the lake I've actually put out quite a lot of bait. I went around and put in three kilos of bait on one spot which is the left hand rod as you're looking at it and then the right hand rod which is down in the bay I've put probably a couple of kilos around that one and then the middle rod which is in between the two I've just fished that over a, only half a dozen or so free offerings basically just in the middle of the two um, baited areas and um, yeah went through the night not having any action at all and I then uh, got woken by that, that fish and only a short while straight after that one I had another one just into low 20s so 
yeah, cracking start to, to this swim. I know it does do quite a lot of big fish, you know. Most lakes that you go to, you'll find that there's areas where you can catch a lot of fish from, and there's areas that you can catch much better fish from, but not as many bites, and I think this is one of those areas. It certainly does a fish that I'd really like to catch. It's an old mirror that's known as Five Star. I've fished on Western now on and off for a number of years and that is one of the oldest fish in here and it's a real nice carp around about the 32, 33 pound mark that I'd really like to catch so I know it comes from here so I'm certainly going to try and get down and have a little go in this swim as much as I can now but uh, yeah let's take a look at the, the 29 pounder that I've got down there and uh, I'm sure you'll agree it's a really nice fish. Cheers mate. actually got a little bit of a reddish tint to its fins this carp which I've not seen before not in commons and not in western as well but that is beautiful really happy with that successful overnighter This is the arm that the fish have been getting down and it's really shallow down here but there's always one or two fish down here when it's nice and warm. They tend to hook that far side and come underneath the trees and that's where I've, uh, I've been fishing. Just got my rods, or well, one of my rods anyway, just over there, just on the edge of the rhododendrons. Sometimes you get some really weird things happen to you in carp fishing because I was just saying to Ian and Ash a few moments ago, I'd love to catch a fish called Five Star because it gets caught from this particular swim. And what do you know, there he is. A few moments later, what an awesome fish that is. It comes from this swim, and that's part of the reason why I was setting up in here because uh, it does nine times out of 10 get caught from those roadies. So. Yep, happy days. Carp fishing really is a funny old game sometimes and you know, I can't quite really believe what's just happened because I know it's not a massive fish five star, but to sit there and say I'm fishing this swim because I'd love to catch five star, or I know it gets caught from here. Tom Forrester, who's the fishery manager here, and Rob Ailes, who owns the lakes, has said to me for quite a while, if you want to catch five star, then go and fish down the roadies. And this is my first ever night in this particular swim. And yeah, just to get that fish a few moments ago is just, just quite weird, you know, quite weird. You know, it doesn't happen very often, things like that in carp fishing, where you, you say, I'd love to catch that fish, and then moments later, it, it comes along. And in, in actual fact, I'm used to sort of hearing other people say it, even though I go carping quite a lot more than other people. But yeah, I've had three bites this morning, all on that right hand rod, just down that channel there. And as you can see, with that rod, I've got a, a peg in the ground down there and it's all locked up so basically I'm just sitting there waiting for a couple of bleeps and then I'm on the rod as quickly as I can just trying to stop them from getting into the back of the snags that's there and uh, it's working yeah it's doing the job but really really good really happy because I'm only here for a night so to catch three nice fish including a couple of 29s yeah proper happy fishing western on and off now for a few years and one particular fish that I've really wanted to catch is this one and it's known as five star and that is an absolutely gorgeous 